guys, we're back on the Cape. And we're gonna go look in on the boat. But it's not getting unwrapped today because we got wicked driving rain coming tomorrow with 30, 40 knot winds. Looks good. She looks good and tight. Let's go over and check the port. Awesome, looking fantastic. I can't believe what I just see right here. I left my soldering kit out here in the wind and the rain for probably two to three weeks. Oh, well, I'll take it inside and clean it up. Anyway, guys, hey, welcome back to Restoring Little Girl. We're back on the Cape. Uh, got the nasty, nasty weather coming tomorrow, but we're going to be working on the uh, on the uh, cushion covers anyway. Uh, and uh, we'll make good use of our rain time. But then after that, it's all about some sanding on Friday and Saturday. It looks like by late Friday, we should be able to get out here and start getting some work done. All right, hey, glad to be back. We'll catch you guys a little bit later. Well, guys, uh, new day on Cape Cod. Uh, we just uh, went through two nasty, nasty days. I didn't even bother to uncover the boat. Uh, it was blowing 50 mile an hour winds yesterday, driving rain, just, just torrential. It was just garbage. Day before that wasn't any better. A little less on the wind, but I mean, it's still just garbage. So anyway, uh, two days of lost time as far as the, the boat is concerned, but I did go ahead and finish up uh, a video and I was up behind, uh, uh, Olive Garden at seven o'clock this morning uploading to be able to get my last video out that uh, I did when I was working on the cushion covers up in Vermont. Anyway, in the meantime, we're a uh, uh, new day has started here. I'm going to go get the boat uncovered. Uh, it's going to be spritzing for a bit, but we can deal with that. And uh, we're still going to have some high winds throughout the day, probably 20, 30 miles an hour. And uh, we'll just kind of uh, try to get what done we can get done. And uh, in the meantime, hope you guys are having a great day, and uh, welcome to Cape Cod. Well, we're back. Good morning, guys. Um, finally got the boat all untied, and uh, still blowing like crazy out there. But we're gonna still gonna try to get some work done. I got a list of small stuff in in the cabin here, which I'm gonna try to get done this morning. Uh, but other than that, if we uh, get this wind to come down a little bit and get a little bit of warmer weather, maybe warm things up by this afternoon. We'll try to get some, some sanding done on the hull. That starboard's still going to be done. It got a little bit done back under the fantail back here and some on the bow before my sander decided to give up on me. Or, well, let's put it this way, uh, reduce its power. So, anyway, well, listen, welcome back to Restoring Little Girl. And uh, we're going to get some work done around here. We'll bring you up as things get done. So, hope you guys have a great day. Uh, stay healthy. Uh, stay away from the virus. And uh, we're trying to do the same. Take care. Well, guys, it's a cold, raw day out here today, and uh, since I was finally, finally getting back to doing my knot meter, I decided uh, I'm going to go up to Home Depot and pick up a multi-strip. I had bought a really, really nice uh, circuit breaker multi-strip for the boat a dog's age ago, and I got to looking at that one day and said, you know what, I could really use that at home, stupid. So anyway, uh, but I want to be able to uh, get, be out here this afternoon, work in the cabin, have the heater on, have the soldering iron plugged in, maybe have a light on, and be able to do all that with a new multi-strip. So I'm heading up to Home Depot, and I'm going to pick that up now. In the meantime, let me just turn this around. I'm going to show you what I've been working with, because uh, finally, uh, I just pulled up the info on this this morning. It was th three years ago in February that I um, worked on this knot meter, and uh, I can't believe it. It's just time has flown by, and I'm finally getting back to it. I, it's just such a nasty cold day. I figured we'd get some work done in the cabin instead of 
laying on the cold ground, uh, cold wet ground, uh, sanding the bottom of the boat. So let me turn this around. Okay, this is a little SR Mariner knot meter. Um, it's an antique. Um, and the thing is, uh, when I got the boat, you could not even read any of this dial. It was completely fogged, complete, well, not fogged, completely uh, opaque from salt buildup, build I guess. And I did a major polish job on it. I probably ought to do some more on it now. But, I mean, it's, um, you know, at least now you can read it very adequately. Um, and uh, the, the problem was that when I put it in, let me see. This piece of wood was not here. Uh, that piece of wood is something I cut that is specifically for the bottom circum well the circumference of the knot meter. Uh, and other than that, it was just sloppy in here, but just uh, completely plugged in with nothing but caulking. And I pulled miles of caulking out of the out of, between the liner and the and the outer hull. And got all that out of the way. Cut this specifically for the for the bottom of the knot meter, so it perfectly cradles it and holds it in position. And I will be using some caulking and the locking ring, which is right here. Um, this is the locking ring that goes on the inside of it. And um, in order to hold it really secure, I am going to be using a little bit of caulking, particularly against the back of the flange here and against the cabin wall uh, so to uh, prevent moisture from getting in, although it has not gotten in because the boat is staying covered. In the meantime, what, what uh, Ellison, I'll just introduce everything now before I get back. These are the wires that went to it right here. And you can, well, the, I've started sanding this one, but you can see the corrosion. Look at the back of these. They're just completely green and corroded. And so that those are all going to get clean. I've got to put a new ring on it. Uh, and thankfully, I have uh, brand new uh, ring terminals of the right size for this. So I'll be putting one on that. This looks like the hot lead for the powering up the unit. And uh, trying to get this thing all squared away today, I may wait and, and uh, cock it uh, on a warmer day because it is nasty cold and, and blowing wind today. But in the meantime, inside here, well, I can't do it now. Let me see if I... No, okay. In behind my water tank, uh, d down through the bottom of the hull is the, um, is, the, is the paddle wheel that goes to this knot meter. And uh, I cleaned that a long time ago, too. That was a, uh, um, uh, a job all by itself, and it's part of another video. The other thing I did, uh, and I'll show you the knot meter uh, paddle wheel in just a minute when I get down off of here. The other thing that I did was before I took everything apart, I took pictures of the wiring just as it was. And boy, I just pulled them up. I've got them on my cell phone. And so when I get ready to put all the wires back, they'll be going back onto the back of the knot meter exactly as they were. Um, uh, anybody who's doing a job like this, Boy, take pictures just like you found it, and that way uh, when you go go to putting everything back together, you've got your picture, and you can work from that and get all the wires right back where they belong. Okay, next stop is being down onto the boat and showing you the paddle wheel, and uh, we'll talk about that when we get there. Okay, so here we are. This is the paddle wheel. When I found this, they had painted all up inside of here that paddle wheel was loaded on every paddle with bottom paint it couldn't spin for nothing but anyway i i, I took it completely out you have to take it out from the inside there's a um a, a collar that you can take undo and pull it up out of there and i completely cleaned this thing every one of the paddles you know you know there's a little bit of residue right there on the side i may do that but anyway, but it spins very freely now, and you can see it, it'll be functional. And by the way, it will never, ever get painted over again. <laughs> Boy, I don't know what they were thinking. Maybe they just figure, well, maybe they haven't used it in a long time. We don't need it, so let's just paint it. But I mean, that, that was just atrocious. I can't believe somebody would be that ignorant as to 
uh, not to, to bother to paint around it, not up into it. All right, well, that's it. Um, going to head for Walmart and pick myself up a multi-strip, and then we'll get back and start working on this. I cannot believe how long it took me to get the insulation off that little piece of wire right there. It is so fine. And these, I don't know if they even make ring terminals the appropriate size. Now, they've got big old honking ones on here. That, well, but I think these are about the smallest you can get. And I've got some just like it that I'm going to go ahead and use. But I'm really thinking seriously about uh, not just uh, crimping, but actually trying to solder into the crimp. Um, yeah, well, we'll see how that goes. I've got a, my brand new soldering iron here that really does a super job of um, soldering. Uh, even when it's cold outside, This it has just really, really good heat for doing that kind of stuff. So we'll see. Let me uh, get to work on this, and I'll show you what we come up with. Well, it's on. It is secure. You can just see that wire crimped right there. And it's crimped really hard, so I don't think it's going to come out of there. It looks feels good and solid. Now, I think what they these guys did, I think they, they had some sort of black goop or something that they filled the solders with uh, to try to protect it. I've heard of this stuff before, to try to keep it from corroding. Um, I'll look into that, but for right now, that's on there good and solid, I think. Uh, maybe not. Okay, well, take two. We'll see. No, it was on solid. What, ha what was happening, I was pulling this in and out of the hole, and it felt like that was loose. It's not loose. It's totally tight right there. So I don't think we're, I don't think we've got a problem. Anyway, I'm going to get the, uh, get the, uh, uh, the volt, <laughs> volt meter, right, the knot meter back in here, and test and see how well these are going to reach. But before I do any of that, I'm going to take uh, sandpaper and clean up these terminals, get all the corrosion off from them, maybe spray them with something, some uh, WD or something like that to keep them from corroding further. Um, anyway, here's here's the other ones. And again, these, hang on, hang on, get all crossed up here. Yeah, these, these have got to be clean. I mean, they're just so scungy. So, anyway, all right, back to work. All right, well, this is hitched up exactly like the photograph I took back in February of 2017. Uh, just the way I undid the wires then is exactly how they are now, except everything is completely cleaned. What I did, I took WD-40 and saturated the screws in WD, uh, kind of cleaned them, and then I put one by one, I put it down in there, rocked the screw back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and then take some paper towel and get it down in there. And I, I got a lot of crud out of there, and everything looked pretty good by the time I got done. So anyway, um, everything's been cleaned up. Uh, all the uh, surfaces have been renewed. And now I've only got to do one thing, and that's get my wife to come out here and spin the paddle down below so I can watch it up here and see if it's doing anything. <laughs> and find out if this antique knot meter is functional at all. So we'll kind of see where it goes from here. All right, bye. Wait a minute, I wasn't... Oh, no, well, that didn't make any difference. <laughs> Wouldn't have made any difference anyway. Ah, oh, dear. Do it again. Well, you were just recording, right? No. Go ahead. No. No. Nothing. Okay. Thank you, babe. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so far, so good. <laughs> Not working. Well, guys, uh, Saturday afternoon is all, all over now. The sun is setting. I'm getting dark. Um, and, uh, after I kind of, I wouldn't call wasting the afternoon working on the knot meter. At least I kind of know where I'm at with it now. And I immediately went in and started looking online, 
Um, they actually make kind of retro looking knot meters circular like the one that I've got here. In other words, you know, um, well, it's not like the one I've got. Uh, that with modern components and so forth. But I'll tell you what, uh, you pay. And by the way, because these are retro and apparently they're somewhat custom, uh, you pay a chunk of it up front. Um, and uh, so they're, they're talking three to 400 bucks uh, for something that would be to, there to replace uh, the knot meter that I have. Um, you know what, uh, for that kind of money, I think for right now, I'm just going to uh, very nicely uh, get this thing uh, cocked, seated uh, with a locking ring on the back, maybe wire it up and, and just see what happens when we get out on the water. And I'm not going to I'm not going to go chasing after this thing right now, because money wise, you know, I got better things I can be doing with the money, um, better things I can be doing with the money in the little girl uh, between now and then. So. Anyway, uh, but uh, on to sanding tomorrow, Lord willing, and I'm hoping that we get a little bit, a little bit warmer. Right now, it's just about 39 degrees, and it's not a with the wind and the damp and the and the cold. Man, it has been a nasty day to be working outside, and I would not have been, wanted to be laying on the ground uh, working, to, you know, trying to get the bottom of this boat sanded today. All right, guys. Well, listen, that's it for tonight. We'll uh, we'll catch you in the morning and uh, hopefully have a little better, a little better work day tomorrow. Um, I am happy that I got a chance to do this, though, to uh, uh, check out the knot meter. The thing has been waiting for three years. <laughs> anyway. All right, guys. Good night. And uh, we'll uh, we'll catch you tomorrow morning, bright and early. Hey guys, so I'm back up in Vermont and I uh, just wanted to throw this in at the very end of this video. Um, I We ended up staying down on the Cape two or three days longer because I was trying to resolve this issue with the, with the outboard motor and this guy that theoretically had bought it. Well, come to find out it was just a big scam uh, and I got his check, but I ripped it up. Um, Wow, <laughs> I'm glad we didn't get caught with that. I had two bankers tell me that the whole thing was a scam. Anyway, long and the short of it, we ended up staying there a couple of days more, and uh, I had done so much, spent so much time working with the old SR Mariner um, meter there, uh, not meter, that um, I um, I decided to just go ahead and do a two part here. And so I'm going to let the Mariner thing stand, the one that you're just watching the end of it. And uh, we, I'm going to go on. And the rest is going to be about sanding, uh, sanding the bottom of the boat, and about, uh, uh, and about the anchor light that I'm going to be working on in this next section. So anyway, with that, hey, listen, thanks for stopping by Restoring Little Girl. And uh, we'll catch you on the next time around. Uh, another video coming out uh, less than a week, probably a week, something like that, as I finish this thing up. Hey, thanks. Catch you guys later.